Good day. I'm Robert Gordon. Welcome to CPROF's learning video, Merchant Ship Types and Fleets. It is an introduction to the subject of merchant ships, what they are, and their essential role in the business of shipping. We will also look at the total number, features, tonnage, commercial names, and sectors of ships in the World Fleet. Don't forget, you can just stop the video and run that section again if I go too fast. What is a merchant ship? Merchant ships are not naval, military, or fishing vessels, but are ships that are designed, built, owned, and operated for commercial purposes. Some examples of commercial purposes might include carrying cargo and passengers, harbor dredging and towing, offshore support for the oil and gas industries. Merchant ships are built to earn money and generate a profit. This is the MV Flora V, built in 1981. She's an example of an older style ship type known as a general cargo ship. She was designed to carry almost anything, palletized cargo, containers, bulk cargo, and heavy lift project cargo. Note her heavy masts and derricks for cargo loading and discharge, as well as her folding steel hatch covers. They were heavy and complex ships, requiring a large, skilled crew to operate them. Ship design has now evolved and can be divided into six groups or ship types. Clockwise from the top, one, multi-purpose ships and specialized vessels such as car carriers. Two, container ships. Three, bulk uh, carriers, including grain and ore. Four, liquid bulkers, more commonly known as tankers. Five, offshore ships, built to service the oil and gas industries. Six, non-cargo carrying ships, including a wide range of vessels from cruise ships to tugs. Note the total world merchant ship count of about 87,233 vessels, over 500 gross tons in size. Perhaps less than you thought. Dead weight is the weight of cargo, stores, and bunkers a ship can load up to her load line. You can see the load line in the image indicated by a circle with a line through it. The dead weight is a measure of the amount of cargo that can be carried. This is essential to determine the vessel's earnings capability and commercial category that will be used by ship brokers and charters when matching ship with cargo. Ship Type 1, Multipurpose and Specialized Vessels. These are the modern version of the general cargo ship. MPVs are fitted with heavy lift cranes that can operate in tandem to maximize ultra-heavy project cargo lifts. On deck, the hydraulically operated double wide hatches optimize both deck stowage space and access to the holds below. This includes multi-stacked containers and offshore construction components and locomotives, both of which are high freight earning cargos. Under deck, folding decks are fitted to allow the carriage of containers, palletized in bulk cargo, cars, trucks, and even awkward shaped cargo. However, flexible car carrying capability comes at a high shipbuilding cost. Specialized cargo vessels. Roll-on, roll-off vessels are seagoing ferries fitted with either a bow or stern ramp. Cargo, including containers, is loaded onto wheeled truck bed frames, towed and parked by motorized tractor units. Car carriers are long-distance ferries, fitted with stern or side ramps for car and truck transport. Their multiple car decks can be height adjusted to accommodate different size vehicles. Finally, float on, float off vessels transport ultra heavy structures, too heavy to be lifted by a crane. Loading is accomplished by ballasting the flow flow ship to completely submerge her main deck. The cargo is then towed into place and the ship's ballast is pumped out. No room for error with such an operation. Container vessels. 
The world's first container shipment took place in 1956 on board a converted World War II tanker. It was a test cargo consisting of just 58 containers. The voyage was highly successful in reducing delivery time and the cost of handling. It spelled the end of the general cargo ship and the beginning of a global revolution in the transportation of containerized cargo by sea, road, and rail. The race was then on to optimize container use, and the diagram shows the rapid growth in the size of container ships. Today, ultra-large container vessels, ULVCs, can carry up to 22,000 20-foot equivalent units, TEUs. In terms of cargo value, the global container fleet now carries 60% of all world seaborne trade. Dry bulk carriers. Bulk carriers are designed to carry iron ore, coal, grain, and other bulk commodities. The hold diagram shows a huge open cargo space that is divided longitudinally by transverse watertight bulkheads. This division creates between four to five separate cargo holds. Seawater ballast tanks, double bottoms, are fitted between the floors, the tank tops, of the holds, and the bottom outer shell plating. Ballast tanks, also known as deep tanks, are fitted at the bottom corners of the holds and at their top upper corners. When bulkers sail light ship and without cargo, ballasting is essential for stability and safe navigation purposes. Handy size, handy max, and super max. This class of smaller geared bulkers are readily identifiable by their deck cranes. The cranes enable them to load and discharge cargo at almost any port. Cargos include bulk ore and grain, as well as timber, steel coils, and containers. Hence the prefix handy. Handy size bulkers range from 15,000 deadweight to 35,000 deadweight. Handy max bulk carriers range from 40,000 to 50,000 deadweight. Supermax from 50,000 deadweight to 60,000 deadweight. Panamax, New Panamax, Cape Size, and China Max. This larger range of bulk carriers are gearless. They must therefore rely on shore conveyors and shore cranes to load and discharge them. A Panamax bulker can be seen transiting the original Panama Canal locks that are still in use. Due to the draft, length, and width constraints of these locks, a Panamax cannot exceed about 80,000 tons dead weight. However, new and larger locks are now in operation, and new Panamax bulk carriers with an upper limit of about 120,000 dead weight tons can now transit the canal. On the right can be seen what are now the largest dry bulk carriers in the world of 400,000 tons dead weight. They were categorized originally as Veilmax bunkers after the Brazilian mining company that built them. They are the largest bulk carriers allowed to enter Chinese ports and are now known as Chinamax ships. Oil tankers. Tankers vary greatly in size and the types of liquids they can carry. Depending upon the trade and tanker type, Cargos can include crude oil, refined products, and such, uh, petrol and diesel, such as petrol and diesel, chemicals, and liquefied gas. The diagram provides a size comparison starting with coastal tankers that carry refined or clean products such as petrol and diesel. The larger tankers, such as very large crude carriers, VLCCs, transport crude or dirty oil for refining. Oil tanker construction features double cargo hull construction so as to prevent any leakage and pollution due to grounding or collision. The cargo tanks are segregated by both longitudinal and transverse bulkheads for strength, stability, and cargo separation purposes. Product tankers. The word range in the description medium range and long range equates to the word voyage. Accordingly, MR1 and 2 tankers are intended for shorter coastal voyages carrying smaller quantities of liquid cargo, 
On the other hand, LR1 and LR2 tankers are designed to carry much larger quantities of refined products on longer international voyages. The primary features of oil tankers in the medium range and long range category are that they are all constructed with specially coated cargo tanks. This is to enable the carriage of refined or clean petroleum or vegetable oil products intended for direct sale and customer utilization. Aframax and Suez Max. The tanker category named Aframax is derived from the term average freight rate assessment. AFRA, a tanker rating system devised many years ago by Shell. These smaller crude oil tankers, ranging between 80,000 and 120,000 deadweight tons, transport their cargo in uncoated cargo tanks from and to restricted draft ports in the Mediterranean and Black Seas. The category name Suez Max describes a tanker that is restricted by its width or beam and the Suez Canal deepest draft of 20.1 meters or 66 feet. The draft of a fully loaded Suez Max tanker of 200,000 ton deadweight will, by design, usually coincide with the maximum Suez draft limitation. VLCCs and ULCCs. The tanker category name Very Large Crude Carrier, VLCC, applies to crude oil tankers of between 200,000 to 300,000 tons deadweight. Tankers in excess of 300,000 tons deadweight are referred to as ultra-large crude carriers, ULCCs. VLCCs and ULCCs provide the optimum economies of scale with respect to the long-distance transport of crude oil. However, they are subject to a great many geographical trading restrictions due to their extreme dimensions and draft, especially when fully loaded. These restrictions include transit of the Panama Canal and, when fully loaded, the Suez Canal. Gas tankers. LNG and LPG carriers are a special category of tanker. Their construction is dictated by SOLAS and the International Gas Carrier Code. These regulations cover a comprehensive range of safety and security issues in relation to the carriage and handling of a volatile and potentially explosive cargo. Design features include the use of several types of cargo tank construction, including spherical moss tanks and the newer membrane tanks. LNG is liquefied natural gas, mostly methane, which is refrigerated to minus 162 degrees centigrade to liquefy it before it is pumped on board. LPG is liquefied petroleum gas, including propane and butane, which is pressurized to liquefy it before loading. LPG vessels are also suitable for the carriage of ammonia, uh, propylene, and ethylene gas. Chemical tankers. Chemical tankers are designed to carry bulk liquid chemicals as defined by the International Bulk Chemicals Code. Many of these chemicals are highly corrosive or toxic and require very careful handling. Chemical tankers may be constructed with up to 50 to 60 separate cargo tanks. These tanks are fabricated from either stainless steel or from high-grade steel coated with special epoxy paints. It is essential that there not be any cross-contamination of multi-type chemical cargoes during loading and discharging. Each tank will therefore be equipped with individual submersible or deep well pumps and separate loading and discharge lines and hose manifolds to prevent cross-contamination. Offshore ships and drill rigs. The offshore fleet includes a diverse range of specialist vessels that provide oil and gas exploration and production services. A recent development is their use for dismantling redundant offshore oil field platforms and the installation of and maintenance of new offshore wind farms. Examples of offshore vessels include offshore construction vessels, or OCVs, platform supply vessels, PSVs, and drilling rigs. Non-cargo ships. Non-cargo carrying ships constitute a wide and varied ship type group. It may seem odd that passenger vessels, including cruise ships and ferries, are included in this group. Their common feature is that all of the ships in this group provide specialist services, 
and are not dedicated cargo carriers. Examples include a cruise ship, a harbor tug, a dredger, and, at bottom left, a new design icebreaker that has the ability to chew its way through heavy ice with its high-impact Azimuth pod propellers. Many more such non-cargo carrying ship categories exist, but time constraints do not allow us to look further at this time. So we've come to the end of our video. In terms of a summary and what have we learned, let's think about the following. One, the term merchant ship applies to ships that carry cargo or provide special services such as passenger ships and tugs. The latest Equasis ship count reports a global total of 87,233 merchant ships over 500 gross tons. The latest UNCTAD shipping report advises a global total cargo capacity of 1.75 billion tons dead weight and uh, an annual global total seaborne trade of 10 billion tons and rising. UNCTAD designated ship types include multi-purpose uh, cargo and specialist cargo ships, container ships, dry bulk carriers, tankers, offshore vessels and drill rigs, non-cargo service vessels. And finally, ship category designations are broker abbreviations relating to cargo trades, deadweight capacity, and ship canal and report restrictions. And we have reviewed these during the course of the video. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you have any questions, please email me at robert at cprof.com.